In other words, the name, if you can speak the true name. In fact, if you can speak the true name of anything, it is said you know, that you have knowledge of it and understanding of it. So Power over it, even. Yeah, right? in, yeah, yeah. In a call with it. You mm-hmm. have the power over it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let, let's. Would you would you expand on this a little bit more and tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. Right. But but in order for me to expand on it, I must first see if you can pass the test. <laughs> Is this okay, like a so I have a, I have a riddle <laughs> for you, like Golan. You ready? Sure. If you can answer this riddle, I I will grant you any wish. Oh my! All right. Okay. What is the fastest thing? Uh, to travel, what travels the fastest in the universe? What do we have mankind that nothing goes faster than this known to mankind? Thought. Yeah, I would say the speed of thought. Speed of thought. Well, but that hasn't that hasn't actually that may not even be true though because when we're thinking thought can be pretty conceptualizing can be pretty encumbering actually mm. I know that I in fact Earl Bakken the billionaire the founder of Medtronic his favorite saying he invented the original patents for the pacemaker he said he said uh, shoot first aim second <laughs> you know meaning if, you, if you're trying to aim you never you never get a shot round off right you need to just go under sort of this yeah. instinct I'm going to say thoughts no but since, okay. since that's an etherical um invisible nebulous thing we, I won't disqualify you so you get a second try all right let's see the fastest what travels the fastest in the universe um. five four three two one well I I know it's wrong but I guess I gotta say light well yeah you walked down that gauntlet you're pretty brave <laughs> right right into the death trap yeah <laughs> nice. okay Light traveling through the vacuum of space is conventionally thought to be the fastest thing in the universe. But there is a group of scientists that has been published, I'm not the originator of it, that the fastest thing in the universe is sound going through the density of matter of a black hole where 100 million suns is smaller than the tip of a pinhead. Hmm. Okay, because sound going through that kind of dense matter is, is faster than light going through the vacuum of space. Okay. Mm, okay. All right. Everything to me, okay, er, all I care about in my existence, in my life, is sound, resonance, harmonics, vibration, um, the name of God, the word of God, which in the scriptures right, is taught right, to create the name right. of God. You know, and, and again, this is the beginning, the first line of all of those books is, in the beginning was the word, and the word right. became flesh. So what do you right. make of that? The word is the Aleph. It's, the word is considered because it, the reason is is because there is no such thing as a, uh, a written vowel in the Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew, Farsi, which is Persian languages. Um, because you see, they teach that a vowel cannot begin a, a syllable. Like the word apple is not ah, the short a was not a vowel. It's it's a recognized in any univ- in any. Um, uh, Encyclopedia in any dictionary. Um, it's all. It, we don't come across this knowledge very frequently because we don't study phonetics or linguistics. But it turns out that pure breath of vowel cannot begin a consonant, uh, cannot begin a syllable. So the consonant that begins before the, the short a of apple is called the glottal stop. It, there's a upside down c written above the a. That's the international phonetic symbol for that. In Hawaiian, we, it's quite common. You know we have like IAA, six vowels for a, a whole, for one town's name here. Are you familiar with the Hawaiian language, how we have a string of vowels? Mm-mm. No, I'm not. Can you hear me? Uh, I lost you for a second, but I think hold we got on. you. Oops, hold on for a second. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to put you on hold for a second. Yeah, no problem. Everybody, you're listening to KOPN Columbia, oh. 89.5 FM. It's Mike Hagan. It is about 25 after the hour of midnight on now the 24th of July. We've got Marco Roden on with us from his uh, place on the Big Island of Hawaii. And uh, we'll check back in with you. Marco, you still there? I'm here. That's my friend Ray. He wanted me to put it on speakerphone. Oh, no problem. And and cameraman and pal. All right. We got you here, I think. I'm back. All right. Good. 
Um, the problem is, is I have cokey frogs here, so if I put it on speakerphone... I can hear them chirping. Yeah, those are frogs, not birds, but they sound like yeah, birds. Yeah, 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 it's cool. I, I got tree frogs at my place. You never know. People don't know what they are. They think they're crickets. Right. <laughs> um, okay, where were we? I'm sorry. Well, we were talking about uh, the guadal stop. Yes. Um, so it's called the Akina in Hawaiian. It's, it's in between two vowels. You'll see it on sometimes on street signs in different places. Um, it's in all the sacred languages. And it's, that's why it's called the Word of God, because you have the consonant, the Akina, or the guadal stop. The Aleph is, is called the seat of the Hamza in Arabic or Persian. And it's a consonant, and, and then uh, the vowel sign is written. So the aleph is actually a consonant and a vowel, which precedes it. Um, anyway, that's religious mysticism we're talking about. Right, but you're saying that there's actually a word, a spoken word. That's the word. The aleph is a word because you have a consonant and a vowel together. Uh-huh. And, the, and the aleph is not a, a vowel. It's It's... It's an actual consonant. And that's why in the scriptures, when it's referred to the word of God, it's because it's actually, in order to say, to do the, say the breath, you actually have a consonant with it. Do you follow that? Mm, sort of. In other words, um, what would be a good, a good example? Like, um, up. Okay? It's not just the you which is the breath, and then the letter P. There's the, in order to have a true, to say the word up, you have this, it's called the heart attack on the vowel in Arabic, Persian. In Persian, it's elited, the heart attack, but it's still a consonant before the U. So it's uh, up. Mm. You can't have pure breath beginning a syllable. It's, a, it's, it's an established, acknowledged by recognized conventional linguistics phonetics that breath cannot begin. It's the nature of the human throat. Mm -hmm. The way we breathe. Our anatomy, yeah. So a lot of this, in fact, a major part of this is about breath. Not necessarily, I mean... It's all all back to energy and breath and and inhale, exhale, compression, decompression, implosion, explosion, black hole to white hole, vortice hole, wormhole, you know, uh, underpinning nested vortice, it's how everything moves, and it's one-way positive flow, and it's stream, and it's stomach, and it's stomach bed. It's a ratchet. It's, it's how life moves forward. Yeah. Hey, actually, uh, Marco, I'm going to have Will uh, on the mic here for a second because he's got a question for you, and I know you don't okay. mind doing these sort of things. So, yeah. Will, go ahead. This is Marco Roden. Marco, this is Will. Hi, Marco. Hi. So, I, I guess my, I guess uh, the the heart of my real heart. loud. Oh, I'm get closer sorry. to your microphone. Let me get closer to my mic. Uh, I'm not you. used to being on the radio. There you go. So I guess the the question I have for you, and, and keep in mind, I, I'm not going to make any bones about it. I'm a I'm a committed atheist. I'm, I'm a militant atheist. Okay, and I heard you say you're committed atheist, but I, it is a little bit echoey there. So speak as loud as you can. So yeah, uh, I I That's am better. a committed atheist. I'm a I'm almost a a militant atheist, you know, and and I guess I guess my question is when you when you start to um, merge science and religion, uh-huh. it I'm not sure it does a service to either, and you know. No, I, but I I do do a service to you because there isn't anybody else then that can bridge the gap for you. At least I'm in a position to do it, and I have something to share with you. But you know, I guess it, it, from the point I, of view of I'm an willing atheist, to walk. I'm willing to walk the plank. And, t- and take on the responsibility, if, if you're willing to challenge me enough and persevere, to demonstrate to you that there is a creator, that there is an all-coherent intelligence behind everything, that there is an invisible hand, that nothing moves or has uh Have you ever read Bertrand Russell? I, I've, I live in a vacuum in isolation. I haven't, unfortunately. Russell talked about how uh, he worshipped a teapot that orbited somewhere between Mars and Venus, and how he could apply the a same... A cosmic teapot. A cosmic teapot, and this, this teapot orbited between these two planets in the solar system. It was the name, if you can speak the true name... In fact, if you can speak the true name of anything, 
it is said, you know, that you have knowledge of it and understanding of it. So power over it, even. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In yeah. a cult, it's, you mm-hmm. have the power over it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let, let's. Would you would you expand on this a little bit more and tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. All right. But but in order for me to expand on it, I must first see if you can pass the test. <laughs> Is this okay, like a so I have, I have a riddle <laughs> for you, like Golan. You ready? Sure. If you can answer this riddle, I, I will grant you any wish. Oh, my. All right. Okay. What is the fastest thing to travel? What travels the fastest in the universe? What do we have mankind that nothing goes faster than this known to mankind? Yeah, I would say the speed of thought. Speed of thought. Well, but that hasn't, that hasn't actually, that may not even be true, though, because when we're thinking, thought can be pretty, conceptualizing can be pretty encumbering, actually. Mm. I know that I, in fact, Earl Bakken, the billionaire, the founder of Medtronic, his favorite saying, he invented the original patents for the pacemaker. He said, he said, uh, shoot first, aim second. <laughs> you know, meaning if, you, if you're trying to aim, you never, you never get a shot round off. Right, you need to just go under sort of this yeah. instinct. Thing. I'm going to say thoughts, no, but since, okay. since that's an etheric... Anyway, that's religious mysticism we're talking about. Right, but you're saying that there's actually a word, a spoken word. That's the word. The aleph is a word because you have a consonant and a vowel together. Uh-huh. And, the, and the aleph is not a, a vowel. It's, it's, it's an actual consonant. And that's why in the scriptures, when it's referred to the word of God, it's because it's actually, in order to say, to do the, say the breath, you actually have a consonant with it. Do you follow that? Mm, sort of. In other words, um, what would be a good, a good example? Like, um, up, okay? It's not just the U, which is the breath, and then the letter P. There's the, in order to have a true, to say the word up, you have this, it's called the heart attack on the vowel in Arabic, Persian. In Persian, it's elited, the heart attack, but it's still a consonant before the U. So it's uh, up. Mm. You can't have pure breath beginning a syllable. It's, a, it's, it's an established, acknowledged by recognized conventional linguistics phonetics that breath cannot begin. It's the nature of the human throat. Mm-hmm. The way we breathe. Our anatomy, yeah. So a lot of this, in fact, the, a major part of this is about breath. Cool. Um, invisible, nebulous thing. We, I won't disqualify you. So you get a second try. All right, let's see. The fastest, what travels the fastest in the universe? Um... Five, four, three, two, one. Well, I I know it's wrong, but I guess I gotta say light. Well, yeah, you walked down that gauntlet. You're pretty brave. <laughs> right, right into the death trap. Yeah. <laughs> light. Okay. Light traveling through the vacuum of space is conventionally thought to be the fastest thing in the universe, but there is a group of scientists that has been published. I'm not the originator of it. That the fastest thing of, in the universe is sound going through the density of matter of a black hole where a hundred million suns is smaller than the tip of a pinhead. Hmm. Okay, because sound going through that kind of dense matter is, is faster than light going through the vacuum of space. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. Everything to me, okay, er, all I care about in my existence, in my life, is sound, resonance, harmonics, vibration, um, the name of God, the word of God, which in the scriptures is taught to create the name of God. You know, and and again, this is the beginning, the first line of all of those books is, in the beginning was the word, and the word became flesh. So what do you make of that? The word is the Aleph. The word is considered, because the reason is, is because there is no such thing as a, a written vowel in the Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew, Farsi, which is Persian languages. Um, because, you see, they teach that a vowel cannot begin a, a syllable. Like the word apple is not ah, the short a, was not a vowel. It's, it's a recognized in any, uni- in any um, uh, encyclopedia, in any dictionary. Um, it's all, it, we don't 
come across this knowledge very frequently because we don't study phonetics or linguistics. But it turns out that pure breath of vowel cannot begin a consonant, uh, cannot begin a syllable. So the consonant that begins before the, the short A of apple is called the glottal stop. There's an upside-down C written above the A that's the international phonetic symbol for that. In Hawaiian, we, it's quite common. You know we have like IAA, six vowels for a, a whole, for one town's name here. Are you familiar with the Hawaiian language, how we have a string of vowels? Mm -mm. No, I'm not. Can you hear me? Uh, I lost you for a second, but I think hold we got on. you. Oops, hold on for a second. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to put you on hold for a second. Yeah, no problem. Everybody, you're listening to KOPN Columbia, oh. 89.5 FM. It's Mike Hagan. It is about 25 after the hour of midnight on now the 24th of July. We've got Marco Roden on with us from his uh, place on the Big Island of Hawaii. And uh, we'll check back in with you. Marco, you still there? I'm here. That's my friend Ray. Oh. He wanted me to put it on speakerphone. Oh, no oh, problem. And, and cameraman and pal. <laughs> All right. We got you here, I think. I'm back. All right. Good. Um, the problem is, is I have cokey frogs here, so if I put it on speakerphone... I can hear them chirping. Yeah, those are frogs, not birds, but they sound like yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I, I got tree frogs at my place. You never know. People don't know what they are. They think they're crickets. Right. <laughs> um, okay, where were we? I'm sorry. Well, we were talking about uh, the guadal stop. Yes. Um... So it's called the Akina in Hawaiian. It's, it's in between two vowels. You'll see it on sometimes on street signs in different places. Um, it's in all the sacred languages. And it's, that's why it's called the Word of God, because you have the consonant, the Akina, or the glottal stop. The Aleph is, is called the seat of the Hamza in Arabic or Persian. And it's a consonant. And, and then uh, the vowel sign is written. So the Aleph is actually a consonant and a vowel, which precedes it. Um, 